a little cold minnow water in the crotchels there. Got a little excited, <laughs> all for the team. So I am turning into a Walmart parking lot in Port Clinton, Ohio to find Ross Robertson. Again. It's, it's been so long, it's been since November. Come here. Okay. Oh, oh. I know, I know, I know. We closed the 2017 hook shot season with Ross Robertson, and yet here he is again kicking off 2018. Okay, but hear me out on this one. Ross has been trying to get me on the ice walleye fishing for years. And where we were actually going to do that was the tiny island of Put-in Bay, which is one of the bass islands in the western basin of Lake Erie in Ohio. I don't really love small plates. Now, truth be told, that was not necessarily location number one from outset, but there's some things you need to understand about ice on Lake Erie. Whatever you do fishing on the Great Lakes, you have to have multiple plans because things are going to change. You know, as this winter started off gangbusters, the closer we got to what should be hardcore winter time, we can't even keep ice in a drink. So all of a sudden the options become very, very limited. Realistically, when you're fishing on the Great Lakes, you don't fish where the fish are at or where you want to. You go where it's safe and you know you can come home and actually still catch fish. So quite literally, Thanks to winds and some temperature changes in the time between setup and execution of this trip, the last safe fishable ice on all of Lake Erie is right here at Put-in Bay. And Ross, who is a man of many connections, has been friends with Ryan Stoiber, a lifelong islander since college. You know, it's not sometimes what you know, sometimes it's who you know. And having the ability to go to an island that basically has one place to open to eat, and that's about it, and have some machines and some gear stashed there, maybe late in the summer because we were thinking ahead, was the only way we were gonna get out on a two mile by two mile section of ice and hope that there was walleyes there. Yeah, here we're on Put Bay. On this side, we're gonna use a boat. And over there, we're gonna use an auger. There is no bait and tackle shop here. For you to just get minnows, you need somebody to trap them for you during open water, and you've gotta store them out here. Only thing locked on Put Bay in the winter it's minnows. You know, Ryan and all his Islander buddies, they ice fish all winter. There's not much else to do except drink or ice fish. Luckily, word on the street was that the walleyes were thick out there. Listen, everybody. Regulators. The real mud dog going to kick some ass. Try. Look at that. My eyelids froze on the way over. You know, it became very clear when we started flying over that we knew we were fishing in a box. But it wasn't like we were going there blind. You gotta keep in mind, this is waters that I have fished for more than 25 years. Fortunately, we were in the right box. Permission to engage? Engage. He, oh, here he comes. Oh, he's got him. I don't think that we had those flashers set up for 10 minutes and there was fire on that screen. No mistake in that hit, ate the fire out of that one. You know, I've been fishing out here for a very long time, but things change quickly. We've got our 2015 hatch with over 100 million walleye, so we got these two, three pounders literally everywhere. But what I didn't s suspect was the perch. And all of a sudden, that morning wave sort of petered out, and the perch patrol came in in full force. Another one for the perch paw. We got covered up in yellow perch so quickly that we immediately started joking like, holy maybe we should have been doing a yellow perch show. Make a sandwich out of that one. Sandwich. But this was absolutely nonstop. I mean, normally these walleyes come in here like they do these big schools and they'll push those perch right down because that's food, man. But it certainly didn't work like that this trip, I can tell you that. We're still having fun, but that ain't the one. I just have to like not be in there for a second. We have like a serious lull in action here. It smells like a college dorm room. And it is so like still out here, it's eerie. No pun intended. Now it's not like we weren't catching any walleyes, but they were really few and far between, or they'd be mixed in with the perch marks and they would just kind of surprise you. Tiny bit closer to Donkeyville on that one. 
going to eat, though. So Ross and I are working really hard to chip away at walleyes that afternoon. And all of a sudden, you know, Ryan's probably 50 feet away, and me and him, I've known him for 20-some years. We like to bust each other's chops. So he starts yelling, hog! And we go bolting out of that pop-up at 100 miles an hour, racing over to see this fish. <laughs> that is what we're looking for, boys! I mean, you can't fake that enthusiasm. Big Daddy had him hooked up. Though secretly, I know Ross really wanted that one to be his. How much does that burn your ass? Not at all. Liar, you look at you, liar. You can't not, even look at me. Not at all. Oh, all right. You know, you can be out here for hours staring at that screen, just almost rocking yourself to sleep. But it's amazing at how many times that last few minutes of light, as you can just kind of see with the ambient, all of a sudden those marks start to get a lot bigger. Little bit chunkier in the last half hour. And we're chipping away and we're chipping away and it's getting darker and darker and darker. And Ross goes, we got to stick this out. We got to stick this out. Ooh, that's a buzzer. To be clear, there are giants out here but it's so hard to get a lure in front of them because we've got so many of the smaller fish. Now we might not have been seeing donkey marks, but I mean that screen stayed lit literally till we were packing up. Does it look like I'm in the thing? Yeah. I feel like I'm in the thing. Until eventually it was just like, okay, hot showers time. Naughty. What's up everybody? EK on ice here. You know, I might not have fancy electronics and gas augers when I hit the hardwooder, but I do have one little trick that'll help take some of the pain out of freezing your ass off to catch a bluegill. You know, tip-ups are highly effective, but you know, resetting your depth every time you catch a fish or check your bait can be kind of a chore. The simple solution is ripping a couple buttons off that shirt you know damn well doesn't fit you anymore. All you need to do is thread a button on your tip-up main line before you attach your leader. When the depth is set, slide the button down to the edge of the ice. Now, reel it up to the tip-up spool. And voila, no matter how many times you change your bait or catch a fish, your depth is set. And then comes my favorite part. Waiting, waiting, more waiting. And if the bite is super slow, my next tip would be pack your and move to Florida. It's a little less pretty out here this morning than it was yesterday, but maybe this condition change will work in our favor. That's a pleasure. Yeah, boy! You know, wind can be good out here. I mean, we don't pray for it because it breaks ice up and it shifts things around, but where we're in this little locked up area, a little bit of wind moves the fish, the current, it moves the bait. It's not a bad thing, we just don't want too much of it. Steady. And until about 9.30 that morning, we could do absolutely no wrong. Definite heavier flurry this morning. I think that's the nicest one I've caught so far. Bang, 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 bang. And then like clockwork, them walleyes went away and our yellow belly friends done showed up again. Donkey of a different kind. Eh? We are pissed at these perch, but I'll take a big fatty like that any day. <laughs> you know, Ryan says, hey man, I'm gonna do a little scouting for you. So he grabs a portable and he jumps in it and he makes a little move a couple miles away. You're just gonna come straight through the first pack of shanties. But we start getting the phone chain going. Ryan's got a buddy, he's got one big fish over here. Another guy, got a big fish over here. So we start asking questions and sometimes you gotta know when to move and when to shake. We're gonna move right now. Now this is a commitment, right? You're putting all your eggs in this basket. This is the last day, this is the last shot. And at this point, I mean, we'd caught so many walleyes, that wasn't the issue. It's like, you know, we've caught so many. Now we're just hoping maybe we get a donkey. It's a magic hour sun. You know, we absolutely just jacked them the first night. So going into that second night, we really had high hopes. And while we caught fish, it just really didn't live up to our expectations of that first night. If I had a dollar for every one of these caught. I'm kind of at this point, mentally, I'm fishing for that one bite. I'm a hog hunter at heart. If I catch another hundred, while I love it, I'd rather have one big one. And we had some big marks come in, but they didn't even gauge us. They didn't, they just were there and then just gone. Gone. And to the bitter end, Ross fought to put one serious donkey on the ice for us. But you know what? I was like, dude, there's nothing to complain about from this trip. Never give up. I'm good. I've had enough. I mean, for the average weekend guy fishing on a lake here or there that's struggling to just put a limit together, I mean, this was just rock'em, sock'em, lights out ice fishing. 
And the thing that'll stay with me most is not the fishing, it's just the chance to fish here and meet Ryan and see this little closed society of friends who are all about this island. It's just not a thing that a lot of guys are gonna get to do. And for that reason alone, it was worth having Ross Robertson on Hook Shots again. Fresh fish and Ross Robertson, my two favorite things. Liar. Is anyone out there? Rubby, rubby, touchy, touchy. I just farted. I've been looking, I've been looking. Ryan said, F this noise, he's going to take a dump and get some beer. I've been crawling and crawling.